All right, so there's one more video that I forgot to uh, delve into and mention, uh, and that's the web browser that's available on the uh, LG C6P, pretty much all of the LG uh, OLED TVs. Even if you have uh, 7700, you'll still have this uh, ability as well. Uh, so I just want to kind of go through the uh, web browser and why I believe that the uh, LG TVs have the best ability to browse because this this magic I call it Vmote magic Vmote it's perfect for browsing because it's easier for you to click kind of like a mouse you know think of this like a mouse and it's really good to browse the internet this way you can also connect the keyboard if you like so you can kind of use this as a mouse this uh, remote control you can use it as a mouse and then you can use a keyboard wireless keyboard as well with a dongle USB dongle you can use it to type in uh, but here let's go through um, let's go through this really quick uh, it's very easy to browse uh, there's this little scroll button right here you just scroll down kind of like in the mouse and I found it very easy to browse. I'm just currently checking something out in PlayStation style net. I'm checking out the review on this uh, Farpoint PlayStation VR aim controller. Uh, I've been looking to get one, but uh, unfortunately, they're all sold out. And there's a reason why they're all sold out, because it's a really good experience uh, for VR. When you put in a VR headset and you hold this controller, you really feel like you're there. Now, to me... I don't think I'm going to be that immersed with this because I have already uh, tried HTC Vive controller. I have already tried uh, Oculus Rift uh, touch controller. So I'm kind of like already up to up to speed on what this is going to be feeling like, you know. But hey, you know, we'll check it out when it becomes available. Uh, so far, it's selling really good. Um, I haven't heard anybody say anything bad about this controller, as a matter of fact. Uh, it, it gets the job done well, but the problem is you only have one game. Uh, it's only one game in the market right now, and the Farpoint, it's okay. It's not like super great shooter. It's like it's more like a technical demo, if you will. So uh, I would like to see more games. I would like to see Call of Duty utilize this, uh, you know. But we'll see what happens. Anyway, we're not here to talk about AIM controller. Even though I don't understand why Sony, it's not selling it separate. Instead, they're making you only buy it with a bundle. Which is kind of like... Uh, and then all of a sudden, there's a shortage. Like, really? Uh, how difficult it is for you to make this gun? And I'm saying, it's not like you're building a console. So I think this is being done a little bit on purpose. They're trying to, uh, you know, uh, get as many people pre-order this so they can make more money off of it or whatever. I don't know. There's, there's always some shady shit going on behind the closed doors, man. Uh, there's this stock, lower stocks being done on a purpose sometimes. For this reason, the reason alone, to hype shit out. And to have you buy into it so you'll think it's the best fucking thing ever. Just like uh, the Nintendo Switch is being in shortage on purpose. Come on. Of course they can have them stacked up in the stores. It's just they don't want to. What did I tell you about the PlayStation VR? It'll take six months till they make shitload of money. And then they're going to put it now on the shelves. Now it's available everywhere. It's all being done on purpose, man. Everything's part of the plan. It's just that people are a bunch of sheeps. They believe into the fucking the news and media. The media is there to brainwash you. Okay, you guys need to go watch Dr. Stephen Greer. I don't have time to talk about him too much, but type in his name. Dr. Stephen Greer. This guy was the one that's uh, responsible for the disclosure of the UFOs and the reason be behind not showing the UFOs and all that. It's a pretty cool guy, man. 
And he talks about why all this shit, it's being controlled. It's all about the power and control. And people are so easy to manipulate and easy to control. Anyway, I don't want to talk about that shit. Uh, I want to talk about the browser. Uh, so let's say you want to go to... Uh, let's say we're going to do IGN, right? Uh, let's go let's say to IGN, right? Whatever. Clear all. Let's go to uh, IGN. You see how easy it is to do this? You see my... Um, go IGN. There it is. It's very easy to, to, to move it around. And I'm using a Wi-Fi right now. Alien Covenant, Untangling Alien Complicated Timeline. So I can definitely see... I can definitely see me browsing a little bit. Uh, this is definitely one of the best uh, browsing TVs. If you're going to use an internet TV, uh, and if you don't have a computer and you want to browse through the... And you want to and you want to browse through the uh, internet TV. I think this is the best way to do it, honestly. And uh, all right, so let me uh, go to uh, let's clear this, clear all. Let's go to how about this GameSpot. It's it's fairly good, man. It's 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 sometimes it's faster than let's say four hundred dollar tablet or four hundred dollar uh, laptop. Let's move down a little bit. The reason I'm going through all of these things is because I want to show you this TV to its fullest. I want to explore this TV to its fullest. And uh, what this TV has to offer is pretty, uh, it's pretty good. Now, there's some negatives. Uh, the one negative I want to say, it's like three HDMIs. I wish that they included a similar option like they did with uh, Samsung. You know, that uh, one connect hub. And they gave you like four HDMIs instead of one. I hate the fact going behind a panel and then plugging in the HDMI cables. I wish that they gave you that smart hub. I think the one unique feature that Samsung has is that one connect smart hub and I don't know it's for the life of me I don't understand why LG didn't implement that. Why didn't they use that? Especially with the OLED. You know, so that way you don't have to go behind the uh OLED panel and constantly plug in your HDMI cables. Not that I necessarily have to because I have my receiver. I can plug in everything through my receiver. But I'm simply saying it would have been cool if they used the same option as the Samsung did. That's that's honestly like the only negative I would give. It's the, the lack of... Uh, I wish they had like more than three. If they had four HDMIs, that would have been cool. Um, but... Everything else, man, I'm I'm very happy with this TV, man. And honestly, the input lag, it's not that bad. Really. I mean, it, it, the remote control is one of the best remote controllers ever, man. It's smooth and it's very easy to navigate. Uh, if you, you can continue where you left off, you can go click the recent, go to Netflix, go to the LG store, go to YouTube. Like we can go to the YouTube right now and... and Go where we left off. You'll probably see some stuff like right here. There. Okay, and if you finish watching YouTube, no problem. You go back. And then you go back to the uh, the web browser. and, and uh, Or if you want to continue watching where you left on a Netflix, you click here. You go click Netflix, click Voodoo. So it's pretty unique. Uh, what they've done with this uh, user interface. So, uh, but the browser, it's good. Uh, let's go to a YouTube page like this. YouTube, and let's see how well uh, it, uh, it loads. Let's see. That's pretty cool, man. That's really fast, as a matter of fact. Uh, what the fuck is this? Cyclops, goat. 
That, that's some goddamn. These poor animals are being tested, man. Constantly. Mixed hybrid shit and all that crap. What is this? The hardest version? Try not to laugh. The rock. Uh, as you can see, man, it, it's really smooth experience using the uh, the LG remote. Uh, let's go to some more websites. Uh, I don't want to click on these videos because I don't want to get flagged, you know. But I already tried them. Let's go click on uh, what else we can click. Uh, I'm trying to think of a page that I can click on. Uh, let's do this. Uh, hold on. Let's go to AV forums really quick. Let's see that. Uh, there's AV forums. Very smooth, very fast. You know, no issues here. Smooth as a butter, dude. Um, also, it depends on the type of internet do you have. Like, you know, what type of internet do you have? You know, the, the faster the internet, the better the experience is going to be, obviously. But it's very, it's very smooth, man. Uh, what is this? High frame rate HFR broadcasting. It's on the way with frame rates of up to 120 frames per second. LG has partnered with the SES for demonstration using prototype firmware. Uh, this is interesting. This is very interesting. So uh, we might see some uh, we might see some 4K broadcasting pretty soon. And LG seems to be always the first when it comes to like stepping into new technologies or new formats, something like that. There always seems to be stepping up first. Uh, what else we got here? Let's see. That's the new Oz. I've seen this one, XC993. I thought about getting this one, honestly. Uh, but the reason I... Look, the reason I didn't go with the any... I could have gone with the Sony... Like this one, XE93 or uh, X900. I could have gone... With any of those top-of-the-line Sony... Uh, 4K LED televisions. The reason I didn't go with neither one of those is because... Uh, Here's the thing. I wanted to try OLED, you know. And I told you uh, eight months ago, my next TV is going to be OLED. I told you that. And I knew it's not going to be this one because I was really disappointed with the QLED. It's really not selling that well. Uh, nothing's different. Why spend all that money? Because I already know what the LED is. I, you know, I already, I already experienced a bunch of LED backlits, and, and I experienced truckload of white color gamut. I have a white color gamut TV, uh, so I wanted to step into new technology, and the new technology was the OLED. Since I already been through white color gamut, uh, I think it was reasonable for me to jump into uh, this TV OLED. Now, where is the A1? There is the A1 right here. I think I just saw it. Uh, A1. Let's click on A1. Remember, I'm doing the test on the browser just to see how the browser uh, runs. Uh, see what they say about the uh, A1. What is the Sony A1? Let's see. I mean, here's here's the problem. Look at this. Look at this shit. Look how much it, it costs. 5,000 quids, 5,000 quids. This is ridiculous, man. The Bravia A1, US Sony first proper consumer OLED TV. The company have been making professional OLED monitors for the last few years, but now they're targeting TV enthusiasts. The A1 will support high dynamic range, specific Asia 10 right out of the box. Uh, Sony plan to add support for hybrid, hybrid log gamma, HLG, Dolby Vision later in the year when they upgrade to Android 7. So uh, Sony A1 will be upgrading to Dolby Vision later on this year, so that's pretty cool. But I already have Dolby Vision on this TV, uh, and it's a 10-bit. Keep in mind, Sony A1, it's 10-bit. 
So whatever I experience in Dolby Vision on this TV, you'll be able to experience on the A1, but you'll be paying a higher price to experience that Dolby Vision. If Sony A1 was a 12-bit panel, I'll gladly pay uh, $4,000, but it's not a 12-bit panel, okay? And this is the reason why I went to the cheapest route on this TV, and I got a great deal. I told you $1,500 on this TV. I'm not knocking Sony. I've seen Sony. i played with it. It's a great, especially these speakers, the way they vibrate over the screen. They're pretty cool, man. These speakers are so specific and so unique. Uh, I might do a video separate on this and talk about these speakers. They're so unique, man. Sony A1, it's a great OLED TV, but the problem is this. There's cheaper options to go with, and I will get the same exact experience. Because they're both 10-bit television sets. They're both OLED, and they're both 10-bit. So Dolby Vision on this one is going to be exactly the same as it is on this one. Now, the only difference this one might have, quote-unquote, is the uh, lower input lag, lower uh, latency. Listen, guys, this is a bunch of gimmicks. You're not going to notice that. Your eyes will not notice that, that gimmick. Okay. And what's with the remote? Here's what pisses me off about Sony. Seriously, dude? You're going to sell a $5,000 TV, $4,000 TV, and this is the kind of a fucking remote you're going to give me for that kind of money? Look what LG did. Innovation, people. Okay? I prefer innovation. I don't mind spending money. No, Nobody minds spending money into something that it's worth it. But this, come on, man. Really? You spend all that time and effort to create a design of the TV, but you couldn't create a design and innovate something new with the remote control? I mean, come on. Come on. You couldn't even put a 3D on there. It's like, come on. And you're asking, and you're asking a uh, $5,000 I know what this is. This is the the, the measurement of the, uh, the the peak brightness and all that. I know what this is. The grayscale and everything. They're measuring. Here's the thing, man. This is where uh, me and Westside Tech, we happen to be agreeing on. You see this? See this grayscale? You see these, uh, this software? This software, it's measured by a certain standard that was put in place. Quote, unquote, certain standard by, I don't know, who was the guy that put the fucking standard to begin with. All right. And measured by a certain standards. And I'm not, no, I'm not saying that these standards don't work. Sure, they work. But here's the problem with these standard. These softwares will only read to a certain standard where you will have to only calibrate where they tell you to that standard all right but that doesn't mean because you use this software it doesn't mean that this software that this standard here that they're using this equipment that doesn't mean that they will make every content you watch look good you still will have to adjust your picture settings because you're not going to like the standard that, that you are using here just like you don't like the standard that comes with the presets on your TV this is why you have an option to adjust your picture settings and your custom settings on the TV this is the reason why you have this so that you can adjust it the way your eyes see it nobody can tell you what's better for you than your eyes your eyes know best your eyes know exactly how much of color do you need for this content how much of color do I need on the Godfather how much of color do I need on the Prometheus movie because each movie is different each video game is different every content it's different how much color do I need watching Saving Private Ryan because the military movie has a different gray feel to it murky dark gray feel to it with a lot of distortion 
so what type of calibration should I use that's where your eyes come in you know and this is what pisses me off like like these guys and they put all this technical jogger you know WCGW blah blah, blah. they use all this techno jogger they, they, they throw all this technical shit at you so that way you think that this is the way it should be it's like when you sign a contract you know like insurance or this and that they put all the shit in there so they can confuse the fuck out of you so you will think it's a serious shit when in truth your eyes know exactly what you need okay this software cannot know what type of content you're watching it cannot know what do you prefer bright or dark or equal or balanced they don't know that your eyes know that because we all have preferences man see that's the difference okay can you get along with your brother-in-law can you get along with your sister-in-law no you can't because everybody has different ideas everybody has different mentalities this guy likes this, she likes that, this person like this. Everybody has a different taste and preferences. And this is why I use my own eyes. And my friend Robert from Westside Tech, he does the same thing. And I, I'm so glad because we both agree on this. And it's, and uh, I don't think we are alone. I think there's some more people out there, Struders, Mr. Struders believes the same thing as well. Hey, look, if you want to spend $400... To have somebody come to your house and calibrate your TV, man, go and spend that money. More, you know, it's up to you. But I'm telling you, you're gonna regret spending that four hundred dollars. So anyway, guys, uh, there you have it. This is a 22-minute video. It went a little bit longer. I just wanted to show you uh, the browser and how the browser works. Uh, it's this TV. It's very unique in terms of browsing. Uh, and in terms of everything, man, in terms of uh, jumping into the apps, back and forth, going to the YouTube, I mean, uh, there will be an official review where I will talk about this TV for like 46 minutes. So this is just me showing you different features, browser, 